Welcome to another Frontier Precision Tech Talk. My name is Eric Glaves, and today I will be going over how to salvage an off-level static session with Trimble Business Center. If you do a lot of static work, you've likely had the experience of setting up a receiver over a point, only to return at the end of the session and find that that receiver has gone out of level for any number of reasons and is now no longer over the point. Traditional wisdom says that this uh, session is now bad and must be repeated. However, we can use some integrated tools in Trimble Business Center to determine when that receiver went out of level and whether there is enough information between the time you set it up and when it went out of level in order to salvage that session. To do this, we are going to be making use of a little known tool called the force continuous function. The force continuous function is applied to an occupation record after it's been imported to TBC and it transforms a static GNSS observation into a continuous kinematic session. Once this is transformed, we can analyze it as a trajectory to discover when the receiver went out of level and whether there is enough information left to actually salvage the session and get a good fixed solution. So let's go to TBC. I have already imported the static session where the receiver went out of level for point number one. I've also imported a cores static set file for TSEA, which I will be processing point number one against. The first thing I'm going to do is process baselines as usual, just to see if I can even get a fixed solution out of this. And as you can see, I can't even get that. All I can get is a float solution. So I'm going to cancel out of the process baselines. I'm going to open up the properties for point number one. And then I'm going to find the connected data button, represented by a green arrow. I'm going to click on that and find the occupation record for point number one. I will open up the properties for that occupation record and find the force continuous button represented by a white squiggly line with red vertices on it and I will click that button. TBC will ask me if I want to convert those occupations and I will say yes. The static baseline disappears but that's okay because we're going to process it now as a trajectory. I'm going to go right back to process baselines and run it again. What it's going to do this time around is process each individual epoch within that observation as essentially a vertex in what is a long polyline over a very short small area. Once the processing is done I will hit save and then I will have to zoom in very far to point number one and find the trajectory. And there it is. We have essentially two clusters separated by a line and each one of these clusters represents a point where the receiver was relatively stable. So, of course, one of these clusters has to represent when the receiver was actually level and over the point, and the other one must represent the time after which it went out of level and basically settled into a position where it was no longer over the point. The trouble is, we need to figure out when that happened and which one of these clusters is actually the correct one. So to do this, we're going to undo the processing and I'm going to change the way that we process trajectories in TBC by going to the project settings and go to my baseline processing section and then go to the general subsection. Under here I'm going to find the store continuous as trajectory marker and I'm going to change that from yes to no. When I do that I will click OK and then I'm going to process baselines again. What this is going to do it's going to process that as a vector for every epoch. In other words, we're going to have a timestamp and a vector for each individual epoch. This is going to take a little bit of time, but it's going to result in points that we can analyze as discrete vectors in order to figure out when that receiver actually went out of level. This time around, when processing is complete, I have a lot of individual observations as opposed to a single trajectory. I'm going to hit save again. And then once the project is computed, I'm going to, going to zoom all the way in again. And already you can see that this is looking a little bit different this time. This time, each individual epoch has a vector associated with it. And of course, these vectors are time stamped. So our object here is to figure out which of these cluster of points was the earlier one, and nominally was the one where the receiver was in level and over the point. So I'm going to click it somewhere here in the cluster of vectors, click on any one, it doesn't really matter which one, and I'm going to take a look at the start time. 1.55.42 p.m. I'm going to go down to the other one, click somewhere in here, find another vector, and check its time. 
Its time is 2.54, 12 p.m. So obviously, this northeasterly cluster of points was the, the time when the receiver was actually level and over the point. And then it started to drift out of level, came down here to the southwest, and then stayed there until the end of the session. What I need to do now is figure out what time I need to cut off that session at in order to ensure that all the epics that are processed as a static epic um, are actually within this cluster here. So I'm going to take a look at some of these vectors to figure out when they were recorded. So I've got a vector here that says 2.44 p.m. One closer here is 2.19, but that's kind of getting close to those clusters. That may just be an outlier. One over here, about 2.44, coming down, 2.44, still. Uh, this is where a little bit of judgment is required on the processor's part. What I'm going to do here is assume that it probably went out of level around 2.40 or so. That's when it started to drift, because the first vector I see that's really far off from these points is at that 2.44 time period. So I'm just going to make a decision and say I'm going to cut off the session at 2.40 p.m., and leave it at that. Of course, now we have to get this all the way back to a static baseline and change the session. The easiest way to do this is just to use the undo button. I'm going to use, come up here to my quick access toolbar and hit the undo button until I find the undo process for force continuous. I'm back where I started. I have a baseline which has not been processed yet and when I click on that baseline and bring up its properties you can see that the start time and end time both are in blue which in TBC means you can actually edit those quantities. So all I need to do is edit this end time to say 2.40 p.m. I update it and now you can see the duration has changed. I still have a good 53 minutes of static on this session and that should be enough to get me a good solution. So now all I have to do now is go right back to process baselines. Remember, I'm, I've gone all the way back to the beginning and I have a static baseline to process against. We're not doing continuous, we're not doing trajectories. This is just a static session. And this time, when I process it, I get a fixed solution with a horizontal precision of 11 thousandths and a vertical precision of 41 thousandths of a foot. I click Save and there's my static baseline, my post-process vector on top of it. This is a powerful, and in my opinion, underutilized tool in TBC. It's not a silver bullet, but it can help you out a lot when you're working in difficult project areas or when you're having to contend with difficult weather conditions, such as shoulder season where you have a lot of freezing and thawing throughout the day. Let's take a look again at the steps required to actually analyze and process this type of data. First off, you need to import the static data files and orbits that you want to process. Next, select your occupation record for the off-level observation. Then you want to use the force continuous command in the properties pane with the occupation record selected. From there, you want to turn off store continuous as trajectory in your project settings baseline processing general section. This will allow you to see the individual vectors and the timestamps associated with each epoch of the observation. Next, you want to run the process baselines command. Remember, that's under the survey tab. Then zoom into the observation and inspect those vectors. You're going to have to decide on a cutoff time, and this is going to largely rely upon your experience and the particular circumstances of that observation. Not every situation is the same. When you finally decide on a cutoff time, run the undo command until the force continuous is removed and you have that unprocessed static baseline back on your screen. Next, highlight the baseline or baselines associated with that occupation for that relevant observation. And in the properties pane, change the end of session to the decided upon cutoff time. Once that is done, process the baselines as usual. From there, you should be able to get a good fixed solution if you have enough data. Again, this is not a silver bullet, but in a lot of cases, this, this can actually salvage a, a static session from what would otherwise be a bad session that would have to be redone. Thanks for watching, and please do not hesitate to contact us if you have any other questions about this procedure or triple business center questions in general.